an out of this world discovery found in the depths of the sea. Are there extraterrestrial secrets below the ocean's surface? Space rocks recovered from the Pacific initially thought to be a meteor, but now there's biological proof, potentially, that this is not even from the solar system. Let's bring in Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb joining us now. Professor Loeb, thank you so much for your time. This is my second time speaking with you. I love your enthusiasm, and I know you have the proof right there in front of you. What exactly did you find? Well, uh, before I uh, explain, um, I just wanted to say we brought some uh, bottles of champagne on the ship. And when I asked uh, the coordinator of the expedition, uh, why did you bring them? And uh, without knowing what the outcome would be, he said, I'm an optimist. And so uh, if you ask why am I enthusiastic, it's because life is sometimes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And um, it's better to be an optimist. So what we did is go after a meteor that was detected by government sensors in 2014, almost a decade ago, which was moving very fast. It was not bound to the solar system. It was moving too fast to be bound to the sun. And it's the first interstellar object identified by humans. And it uh, collided with Earth and landed near Papua New Guinea, about 90 kilometers away. Uh, in the Pacific Ocean that has a depth of two kilometers. And moreover, the material strength of this object was tougher than all space rocks cataloged by NASA over the past decade, 272 of them. So that raised the possibility since it was moving so fast, faster than 95% of the stars in the vicinity of the sun, tougher than iron meteorites. It raised the possibility that it might be artificial in origin, perhaps a spacecraft like Voyager uh, in a billion years that would collide with another planet. And to find out, we went there. And uh, amazingly enough, we found these spherules that you see on the screen. These are, uh, it, they look like metallic marbles under the microscope. And we demonstrated that astronomy, uh, basically learning about what lies outside the solar system, can be done through microscopes, not only through telescopes. And the next step is to figure out uh, what this material is made of, whether it was artificial in origin, uh, and if so, we might have a technological partner out there. Okay, Professor. So, so you gave us some of the reasons why this may not actually be remnants of a meteor. You talked about the, the consistency, the strength of it, the speed of which uh, it was traveling, but is there any way this still could actually be meteor remnants? Oh, yeah. I mean, a meteor is just an object that collides with Earth and burns up uh, in as a result of friction with air. So it generates a fireball and then disintegrates. And you get an explosion. In this case, the explosion included a few percent of the energy output of the Hiroshima atomic bomb. So anything colliding with Earth from outside is called a meteor. The question is, what was it? Was it a rock? All the meteors we had seen before were rocks from the solar system, leftover debris from the formation process of planets. But this one came from outside the solar system, and it was moving very fast. And the way to figure out what it was is by examining the composition. I, I just brought the, the materials to Harvard University this morning uh, in a briefcase. I got, I got it by FedEx last night, and uh, it includes these spherules, uh, 50 of them that we found, but also additional materials that contains more spherules. And we will examine the composition of these materials uh, in terms of elements, in terms of radioisotopes, uh, radioactive elements, in terms of uh, the structure of the material. Professor, do you and have them right there by you? Can you show us just on camera? Can we see? Uh, well, I uh, actually left them at the laboratory at Professor! Harvard, but I do, <laughs> I do have um, some vials that I just packed for another lab laboratory in Germany that we will share materials with. We also had some uh, some of the spherules left at UC Berkeley as we entered the US on the way back. Professor, the I hate to interrupt you. We only have about 15 seconds left, but regardless of what these items turn out to be, what do you think the odds are that we are not alone in the solar system, that we are not alone in the universe? Very likely. Uh, we are not that intelligent. We should learn from others in our cosmic neighborhood. I love, we heard it right there from a Harvard professor. Thank you so much, Professor Avi Loeb. Thank you so much for your time. And, and I'm sure we'll be checking back with you again. And love your enthusiasm, as always. Thank you.
<laughs> Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.